The miniseries George Washington is going to be airing here on 10, 11 Strong, April the 8th, the 10th, and the 11th. Meet George Washington, Barry Bostwick, who is going to explore the myths of George Washington. Now, let's take them one by one, Barry. We throw them out. We don't explore them. We don't even deal with them. Take uh, them one by one. Okay. George Washington wore wooden teeth. No wooden teeth. No, he, but he did wear false teeth, like most men of the time wore false teeth, because there weren't a lot of great dentists but at the time. Where did they come up? Everyone has thought that George Washington had false teeth. I mean, had uh, wooden well, teeth. I think because of the fact that to make a set of false teeth out of what they were made out of, which is ivory or bone of some sort, uh, you had to make some sort of a mold. You had so you carved it out of wood, see if it fit in the mouth. And then you mm. took that off into your little workbench, and then you, you know, made some real teeth out of it. And then you put the real teeth in. Pain, the pain of your teeth falling out and not oh. having the dent must have been oh. incredible. I think that's the only reason that we won the war is because during the whole Revolutionary War, Washington was in great pain with his teeth. His teeth were falling out one at a time, you know. And uh, in fact, one of the reasons why he never hardly, never hardly ever smiled. <laughs> I went to school to do talk. this. <laughs> uh, yeah. And he was bright too. <laughs> is the fact that he uh, he always had teeth missing in the front, mm. you know. And so he was shy and he was. He was very self-conscious, hated to be yeah. stared at. Next myth, please. Did he throw the silver dollar across the Delaware? No, no. And a, no, no, he did not. Uh, first of all, there were no silver dollars at the time. The, oh. the Potomac is what you're talking about. Somebody correct me. I was going to say Potomac. They yeah. said, no, no he no, threw it across it was the, the Delaware. It was, it was the Potomac, so, so the myth goes. And he didn't do it. And uh, uh, George would never have thrown his money around like that. Yeah. He was a... <laughs> well, he, he w would have had to have a pretty good arm. Have you seen the size of the yep. Potomac? I thought if he threw it, boy, could that guy throw. Well, he was very strong, though. You know, he well. probably could have thrown. That, you want to know the, the basis of that the myth? The real thing. The real thing? Mm -hmm. He used to throw rocks across the Rappahannock when he was a child because he grew up on the Rappahannock River in Ferry Farm. Uh -huh. And, uh, the, the, you know, the sort of... But how many children didn't throw rocks across the particular mm -hmm. pond or something where they lived? You know. Did George chop down the cherry tree? I can't tell a lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, George never. Uh, well, <laughs> no, there is no. There, there is no truth. You know, we can't find it in history anywhere that George ever chopped down a cherry tree, or that he never told a lie to his father. But I think that the basis for some of these myths are 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 are, are good. Are right. Parson Weems, who wrote a little children's book uh, right after Washington died, start, started so many of these, where he used the character of Washington as a youth up to his, his mm -hmm. uh, elderly years as um, um, morality plays, used his character as the spine of the book, you know. Because Washington, indeed, by the time he died, did encapsulate into his personality all of these wonderful character traits, you know, mm -hmm. of honesty and principled man, high ideals. Um, uh, great respect and generosity, you know, for his fellow man. Last myth. George Washington wore a white wig. No. No, I know that's ter uh, <laughs> terrible. He had, you know, George Washington uh, let his hair grow gray. And as it started growing gray, he powdered it down. But he found, he felt that wearing a wig was too much of an association with England mm. and with the uh, aristocracy mm. of the people that he, you know, was you know, <laughs> he fighting against. Speaking of the fighters, you know what I never understood? How, when the British Army came over here, that they would stand with a wall of men and the whole wall would advance like that, just yeah. waiting to be shot down. It was so stupid. And well. I would go back, I would go back and look in my history and say, why did they do that? When it was smarter for George to copy the Indians' uh, attack and the approach method of hiding, you know, Which that made did. sense. Which he did, right? Yeah. Because he really fought the first Vietnam over here. I mean, he was the one who came up with all of those ways of fighting. We have to, you have to remember one thing. Um, first of all, that, uh, that uh, the guns weren't very accurate at the time. So therefore, to get a volley of shot going across an open field, uh, that's the only way they can do it, is to concentrate it. You see, if you put 50 men together in one concentrated group, keep in mind that the, the, the bores of the guns were not like this. They were just like this. So as the bullet came out, it went whoosh, all over the place. There was no controlling where that bullet went or where that little ball went. Mm -hmm. uh, and eventually, by the time we were getting into the Revolutionary War with the, with the backwoodsmen and, and the guns had become, the bore had changed, and they could actually stand behind a tree, take aim, and, and, and hit what they were aiming at.
threat. Up to that point, you couldn't do it. The, the, the warfare was unsophisticated in that way. much we have in common, you and I? We have never met before, but do you know how much we have in common? My mother's blonde, and I like blondes. <laughs> well, <laughs> listen, okay, you were an all-state swimmer. Yeah. My son just qualified for the Olympic time trials in the 100-yard no. breast. And that what? was my stroke, breaststroke. What was your time in the 100 yards? Do you remember? Do you recall? Oh, no. What is his time? 57. 57? 57 flat. Yeah. He would have beat me. Would he? No. What would you remember? Did you, no. did you set a state record? No, 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 no. I wasn't up that, that high. Um, uh, I actually, I hand it to your son. That's a very difficult yes. thing to do. Um, besides, uh, does he practice every morning and every, every evening? Every five hours a day. Oh, can you imagine that? Yeah, we've been doing it a long time. So oh, that's so difficult. We're very thrilled about that. Okay, that's the first thing we have in okay. common. Secondly, you flew the F-4. Yeah. Well, I was in the back seat of an F-4. I mean, there's two seats. He did a movie called Red Flag, right. wasn't that it? Mm -hmm. And you flew in the F-4, yeah. which is what the um, Thunderbirds use, but mm -hmm. you threw up all over the place. Now, why do you have to bring up all this? Well, That's I bring that terrible. up because I flew the F-4 and, and the A-4, and I did not throw up. I loved every second of it, and, and I flew it. I just didn't sit you there. You I got to it? fly it. Because I, I am a pilot. I, my hands were on the bag. I could never get them <laughs> to the wheel. He said, did it really? Why did it oh, yeah. you? He, in fact, the pilot said, now, if you fly it, Barry, and I, because he felt if he took my mind off of, of the illness that I wouldn't, you know, be, get ill. But uh, uh, why did it upset me? Yeah, well, why did you throw up? Um, I threw up because I was in the back seat, and I couldn't see where I was going. If you're in the back seat of an F-4, you know, it's, it's like, like this. So you can only see out of the sides. So I... Going 700 miles off of, you know, a, a, an hour, a miles an hour, and then off, 100 feet off the ground, mm -hmm. um, I was scared. Did, did you do a loop? Did you do a loop? All oh, the way? yeah, did we the did loop? the whole thing. And crush, it crushes you right down the seat like that. Yeah. Home, it feels like it weighs 900 yeah, pounds. Yeah, I and think oh, how it. exciting. Oh, yeah? Oh, yes. If you ever get a chance to fly with the Blue Angels of the Thunderbirds, don't pass it up for one don't second. Don't do it. Okay. Believe me. Don't do it. Now, here's the, the third thing, and this yeah. is really odd. You joined the APA Phoenix Theater in 1969, 68. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, 85. I auditioned, and they wanted to hire me for the APA Phoenix Theater in 1967. You're kidding. And I had to turn them down because they only paid like $40 or I something. Know. I know. I know. What? Oh, really? What season was that? Well, nine, whatever 1967 yeah. was. I don't know what that was. I started out as an extra with them well, when I was in college. And, and then I auditioned, and they wanted me to come to the company as a journeyman. And then I went back to college, and they kept on wanting me to come, because I worked with them in the summers. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, uh, they flew me to New York to, uh, uh, to go to school, actually. They were very generous. I knew I had to go to NYU to work on my master's in acting uh, for w at least one year. Inside of me, I said I had to get more training. And they flew me to New York, and I went to school for one year, and then I went immediately went into the company, for real. They were, they were very good to me. Oh. Ellis Rabb was very good to me. He was well, a leader. Well, you've come a long way. You've done a lot. The king has hired German mercenaries, Hessians, to kill us now. Damn it. If I had any doubt that we should be independent, it's gone! <laughs>
If you miss him in George Washington, and you better not, you can see him Saturday nights at midnight in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Would you believe, do you remember him in the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Brad Majors. Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Pleasure meeting you, Barry. Thank you. Barry Bostwick, he's George Washington. Don't you dare miss it. April 8th, 10th, 11th here on the CBS Network. Stay tuned. 10-11 Morning continues.